the physically conscious mind work together and work with belief systems and what their function is. As we have explained previously in other transmissions, your belief system is basically the product of a triad of experiences, the beliefs, the emotions, the thought patterns that create your physical personality and generate your physical experience. But the triad function, the triad structure also exists between your physical conscious mind, physical subconscious mind, and physical unconscious mind. Now, as we again have said before, many people on your planet have thought of the subconscious and unconscious mind as somehow being underneath the conscious mind, below the conscious mind, because you talk about the idea of things being buried deeply in the subconscious or unconscious mind, and therefore it creates the connotation, the implication that these levels are actually under or below or beneath your physically aware daily conscious mind. They are not. They are above it. Because if you understand the idea of the higher mind, which sees everything, which knows everything about the path you are taking, the theme you have chosen to explore, which is the portion of your total consciousness that retains the big view and sees more clearly than the physical mind does what is going on and what is happening and why with respect to the theme that you chose to explore as a physical being, you will understand that because the higher mind knows everything, then the idea of the unconscious mind is also a very large repository of information. You may not always have access to it, but by having the largest repository of information, it is much closer to the idea of the higher mind and thus higher than the physical mind vibrationally because it contains so much more than the physical mind is capable of handling at any particular moment. Next, the subconscious mind also, in many cases, contains more information than the conscious mind requires for its daily operation, its daily functioning, and thus again is above the physical mind. Again, kind of like not only a repository of more information, but here's the critical key. The subconscious functions between the conscious mind and the unconscious mind as a valve, as a filter, as a processing station between the two, allowing some information from the unconscious mind to come into the subconscious, which then gets processed and filtered in a way that it then can be passed along to passed down to the conscious mind in whatever form is necessary for the conscious mind to receive that processed information in a way that is relevant and works for what the conscious mind needs to know, needs to realize, needs to experience in its experience, in its journey of physical reality. So the idea of how these work together is that you have the physical mind, which is experiencing directly the physical idea, the physical journey, the physical experience. And you have the unconscious mind, which is the greater repository of all the information that will ever be needed to be experienced in this lifetime on this theme by the physical mind. But you have in between the two, the subconscious mind, which acts as the processing center, the filtering center to be able to filter out whatever it is that the physical mind is not ready to handle, not ready to perceive, whatever is not relevant at that moment for the physical mind to know, but which the physical mind can allow to come through if the physical mind will work on belief systems that would be hindering or stopping that information from being presented from the subconscious mind to the physically conscious mind. So the relationship between the three-part belief system and its connection to the three-part 
consciousness triad is that the belief systems will work more directly with the subconscious mind or the subconscious mind will work more directly with the belief systems to create the processes necessary to work out whatever it is necessary to be worked out so that the physical mind can more clearly and cleanly experience the themes of its exploration that it chose while in spirit and thus allow itself to clear out those belief systems which will allow the subconscious mind to process things more efficiently to let things through from the unconscious mind more quickly in a more accelerated way so that there begins to be less barriers so to speak less imposed barriers artificial barriers between the physical conscious subconscious and unconscious mind but while those barriers exist because of whatever the belief systems say the physical mind does or doesn't wish to experience at that moment, either just through timing or through fear, then the idea is that the more you let go of those fear-based beliefs, then only the timing issues will be what allows the subconscious mind to process information from the unconscious and let it through to the conscious mind in a more timely fashion without being inhibited by any fear-based beliefs that the subconscious mind may be taking its cue from to hold back that information until the physical mind feels that it is absolutely ready to handle the information. You have a very, very, very large repository of information and knowledge in the unconscious mind. And therefore, based on the belief systems that allow you to determine when you are ready to be more of yourself, to explore and expand and be aware of more of who you are, the subconscious mind acts as that brake pedal, so to speak, that allows you to determine with your free will and your willingness to process and let go of your fear-based beliefs exactly when you believe you are ready to handle more information and allow the subconscious to process things more efficiently, more quickly, and allow yourself to receive more information that is being held in the unconscious mind that is representative of much more of the theme that you chose to explore as a physical being. So this is how these three components of consciousness in physical reality work together, kind of like a gas pedal, brake pedal sort of system in trinary fashion to download whatever information to you you are ready to receive based on how ready you are to know yourself more fully based on how ready you are to be more aware of the themes you chose to explore based on how ready you are to let go of those fear-based and limiting beliefs negatively speaking and bring them into positive realization so you are as the physical mind in a sense in the driver's seat with your hands firmly on the controls of what will allow the subconscious mind to bring through, to process through the information from the unconscious that can reveal to you more about who you are in a very inspirational way, giving you much more aha moments in life, as you say, allowing you to know yourself more deeply and to understand more clearly the theme that you chose to explore, which gives you more insight into where you're heading. In a sense, opening up the idea of whatever probable reality futures are more conducive and more in alignment with who you truly prefer to be and allowing the theme that you chose to explore to be more informative as to what choices you can make more clearly, giving you discernment to understand what is and isn't true for you and allow you to move forward in life in your physical reality experience in a much more joyful way. So this is how these components work together. Ponder this, let it sink in, absorb it, and continue to let go of those fear-based or negative beliefs, only allowing the timing issues to remain so that what is truly relevant for you in this moment, at any moment in the present, to come through efficiently without hindrance, without inhibition, and allow the subconscious and unconscious portions of your consciousness to work more fluidly together with the conscious mind. We thank you for allowing us to share this with you today. And in return, we ask in what way now may we be of service to you. You may begin with your questions and dialogues, if you wish.
Good day, Bashar. Good day, good day. Uh, I'm here in Encinitas, California, and I have a question. I love that. I love everything that you just shared. I feel like the gas pedal has been pushed down pretty accelerated for me lately. And I give a lot of reverence and appreciation to you for the formula. It's been the most influential teaching um, thus far that has really accelerated my life in such a beautiful way. So I just want to honor you and appreciate all of the um, beautiful experiences that I feel like I've, you've contributed to my life. So I thank you so much. All right. Well, we thank you and our deep appreciation for being willing to apply the information to your life. Yes. And so I mentioned I'm from Encinitas because people have said there's a, the, a vortex here. And I'm just curious if you have any feedback or thoughts on that. There are many vortices everywhere, both great and yeah. small, major, minor vortices. There are vortices over the entire structure of your planet because that's how it works energetically. These act as nodal points for the transmission of or the flow of different kinds of energy that take on different qualities depending upon the area. And people gravitate to these areas in particular because of the kind of frequency that exists within those particular nodal points that aid and assist them specifically in their own journeys in life. In the area that you are mentioning, there is a kind of a quickening energy there. Things can go much more rapidly in that area in general than they may in other areas where people need to have a slower experience. They will usually not go to the area that you have named, where if they desire a much more fluid or quicker, more accelerated experience or alignment with themselves, they will usually gravitate to areas such as you have named, of which there are many around the world, but what you have named is one. Yeah, that's what, and also just the, the monologue about the gas pedal and the valve. I love to talk a little bit more about that because the yes. formula, there's been such uh, amazing synchronicity, but the quickening, the acceleration, um, the valve feels like it's open more than it ever has been. And I'm having some pretty slippery experiences in my consciousness. And I, I think that's part of the reason why I'm drawn to this area. And one of which my highest excitement has been with my coaching clients to go on these trips. And it's been pretty consistent. This just started happening where I've been consistently experiencing simultaneous realities for myself and one other person. But now I've been able to create that experience in small groups of coaching groups. All right. Congratulations. And I'm curious. Go ahead. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. So I'm curious about the mechanics of that because one aspect I feel the, um, it's like the spontaneity where I, the energy is just fitting and I'll, and I know I'll, you know, I know when I'm in that flow, I'll, I know what I need to know in the moment. I'll say what I need to say to specific people in specific ways that tend to, uh, help, I guess, match energy, if you will. That's what it feels like, but yes. I'm experiencing some pretty interesting things. Um, not only being able to create, create scenarios where they're able to experience simultaneous realities undeniably within the group so the whole group is experiencing it but also yeah. time shifts so we had an experience in baja where there was we went through what we perceived as a time change of two hours when there really wasn't one so yeah. i want to hear a little, a little bit more about the mechanics of that all right well again do remember that time is a side effect of your consciousness shifting through parallel realities as we have said therefore when you expand your consciousness and become more aware of more of who you are that already exists on some level in other realities, then those barriers drop, they fade because they're artificially imposed to begin with anyway. It's just a matter of being on a frequency that by definition includes more awareness of more of the realities that you're already connected to because every single reality is here and now. Since time and space are illusions, it's all accessible from here, from now from the moment, from the present. Therefore, the more you expand, the more aware you become of the more that's in the now. Does that make sense? It does. That's, it feels the presence when I'm extremely present. Um, not only am I aware of more realities and more awareness of everything, yes. um, it, I, I'm aware of how I'm creating my past and my now, et cetera, et cetera. My past changes yes. quite often. Yes, 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 because um, they're all here. You don't go anywhere. The mechanics of it is that because everything exists here and now, all at once, 
all you have to do is change your frequency to one that is more representative of an expanded awareness to be aware of more of what's already here. You're not going anywhere. You're not, shall we say, literally diving into or projecting into or penetrating into another reality that's somewhere else. Yes, it's usually separated by differences in frequencies, but those frequencies all exist within your consciousness. So when you start dissolving the differences, in a sense, to some degree between one reality idea and another reality idea, you can start experiencing more than one reality idea simultaneously when your consciousness is capable of handling that. I love that you said that because it does feel like it's dissolving. It actually literally almost, it's my senses feel that it is a dissolving of, of somewhat, feel, I don't know if it's barriers or if it's just illusions, but- um, It's the same um, thing. It, you, That's the same thing. Barriers mm -hmm. are illusions. That's what we're saying. There is only right. one thing in existence and therefore anything mm -hmm. that you consider to be a different thing is an illusion mm -hmm. and is created by the artificial barriers which is differences in frequencies that are created within your consciousness in order to have a certain experience where you feel that it is necessary to experience differences within the one homogenous thing so barriers are illusions yeah i got that thank you and so more about the so the fun of it it's just been such a fluid extremely uh it, it's just been amazing it's, a, it's such a fun exhilarating experience and my question to you is the um, spontaneity so it feels like i'm fitting the energy but it also it's kind of part of me what level i'm creating it from i understand that the higher mind is is the mirror that's reflecting um, but the physical mind is sometimes, you know, a little bit tricky in that I can feel the physical mind wanting to label or um, explain. And so that's becoming less and less. Um, All right. Well, that's fine. Again, the idea is you get to determine what labels need to remain for your own purposes and what labels you can let go of. It's up to you to determine how it works for you. So there's no right or wrong way in that particular process. Go with your flow and see what works. Keep whatever labels work and let go of whatever labels you no longer need. Thank you, Bashar. So the last the, the last part of this uh, segment I want to discuss is the whale. So my highest excitement has always been my connection and my excitement with dolphins and whales. And recently with the gray whales and the humpbacks specifically. Yes. Um, and then I, out of that, we came across a hybrid of a fin and a blue whale in Laredo. And that was quite interesting because he made himself uh, very visible to us over 80 sightings in a very short amount of time. I yes. wanted to see if you had anything to say about that. The hybrids are coming closer. Yeah. Um, you will see um, more um, examples. Okay. You will see more examples in your reality of things that are hybridized to indicate the changes going on. They will start more deeply within your collective consciousness or perhaps your collective unconsciousness, thus representative of the whale, which represents a larger consciousness, showing you more clearly that more hybridization is happening in the non-physical realm, which then translates into the deeper collective unconscious of your people before it also starts trickling down, as you say, into the collective subconscious and the collective consciousness of your people to start recognizing that hybridization is part and parcel of the evolution of humanity on the earth. I love how you just tied that into the unconscious and subconscious and then we did have an experience recently with um an entity in the physical um i've asked before because i've had an experience as well and it feels uh potentially like a yael i wanted to get maybe your validation not that it, i need it but it's always fun to hear i cannot energy. give you validation of that at this time <laughs> okay bashar i love you so much thank you i appreciate Our unconditional you. love to you as well good day is it? Hello, Bashar. So I've been wondering about, I know how we switch Earths billions of times per second, right? I was wondering how this affects us in our sleep. Um, does sleep affect the Earth that we wake up in? Do we wake up in the same Earth that we went to sleep in? Does what we do in our sleep, our consciousness, the dreams that we have affect which Earth we wake up in in any way? Um, that's it. Thank you. Yes, you never wake up in the same reality. 
since you're shifting billions of times a second, even while you're awake, you're never in the same reality. And sleep allows you to do several different things because when you're out of body, you can go to the template level of the physical reality and make different kinds of choices and changes within relevance to the theme you chose to explore. And you can do things in a slightly different way, but you are never in the same reality. But yes, sleep can affect the reality you wake up in. Not that you are not always in a new reality, but it can be a slightly different reality than you might otherwise have woken up in had you remained awake. Hello, Bashar. I hope you have a wonderful day. Of course, always. Um, This is my first time meeting you, so I'm very excited. All right. So are we. Um, So one of the questions I have is um, uh, children, when they're young, uh, often tend to see um, beings when uh, when it's nighttime and they are supposed to go to bed and sleep and the lights are out and um yes yes you know is is there a is there an ability that children have to see things that are like in a different dimension or reality or something yes because they haven't unlearned that yet because they're not fully focused yet on the idea of physical reality as the only thing that they should pay attention to Children are still newly from spirit and still retain the ability to see into other dimensions. It's natural for most children. So the idea is that many children on your planet will learn to stop doing that. Although now in this day and age, they don't have to really learn that. They don't have to focus quite so strongly on the idea that there is only physical reality. They can still experience the themes they chose to explore as physical beings without necessarily losing the ability to perceive beings from other dimensions. So this is something that is new for your society in general on a large scale. People on your planet have always had this ability from time to time, but it used to be rare. Now it's becoming more common. But yes, in general, children on your planet are still closer to spirit than they are to physical reality and for quite some time may still retain the ability to see into other dimensions until for some reason, if there is a reason for them to focus only on their physical theme, then they may close that facility down for a while. And then it may return later in life when they are through exploring certain things. But yes, it's a natural ability that most children have. And is there a way to facilitate the coming back of this ability? Yes, to follow the formula that we have shared with all of you. Okay. Um, Okay. Now, there are also many other techniques. Basically, you can attract through synchronicity whatever technique may work for you. Whatever permission slip will be best aligned for your vibration. But in general, those things will also arrive in your life if you do, in fact, follow the formula. It happens automatically. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Um at some point I was uh, laying in my bed and seeing a dark pattern on the, on the ceiling. And I was a kid back then. And, um, I was kind of fearing for my life because I didn't know what it was. Um, but I was, I was like almost paralyzed. And then I told, I, I said, no, not now. And please leave. And, but I didn't know what it was. And, uh, this happened twice to me when I was a kid, but I still have no idea what it meant or what it's I can a portal, imagine. a portal to another reality and a beginning of a visitation of extra dimensional or extraterrestrial beings coming in to interact with you according to the agreements that you have made in this life to be part of those kinds of encounters and experiences. So what you were initially experiencing was the opening of a portal from one dimension to another. Okay. And, um, is there something I can do to maybe, uh, get back to that point? So now that I know I don't have to be afraid about it. Don't be afraid. And again, follow the formula, be more open to investigating and researching the encounters that exist between extra dimensional and human people on your planet. Educate yourself to know that you're part of a bigger program a bigger agenda for the evolution of the earth for the evolution of humanity 
invited in and feel love for the experience. Most importantly, allow yourself to fill yourself with love and create the invitation on your own terms saying that it can be what works for you and what works for others, but always in a state of unconditional love and service. Okay, I'll try that. All right. Um, okay, when, uh, when I was in school, I had dreams that was like uh, the, the first years of school, so I did not lose the stuff apparently and, until then. Um, so when I was in school, I had dreams at night where I saw things that would happen a day or two later. Yes. And um, I actually made a game out of this because when I went into like a conversation with people and I knew what they would say, uh, I just changed my reply and see what would happen. And this was funny for me. Yes. Well, again, um, everything exists now. All realities exist now. What you call past, present, and future are all here. And there are multiple versions of everything. So if you have expanded your consciousness, again, especially when you are younger, and made a game out of it, which is a positive thing to do, then it can help practice and train you to be able to perceive more realities that exist in the here and now moment. And thus you can perhaps perceive more clearly the probabilities of which reality will manifest or crystallize in your particular physical world experience. So that's not unusual. It's just that you're becoming more aware that every reality, every probable reality that is most likely to manifest is already known to you, is already here and already exists. It's just a matter of which way you choose to go and how strongly you choose to crystallize the realities that you're perceiving. Okay. Um, and I guess... Did that make sense to you? Do you understand what we're saying? Yes. All right. I guess getting back to that is also following the formula. Everything is contained in following the formula as precisely as possible. It leaves absolutely nothing important or relevant out of your life. It will bring you what you need exactly when you need it. Okay. All right. Um, I was in October 2011. I was in a uh, group that did uh, C5 protocols for contacting extraterrestrials. Yes. And um, we had some contact with, uh, we saw ships flying around and we had uh, uh, high strange, uh, strangeness uh, events or, or things that happened that were strange. All right, well, congratulations. Um, thank you. And um, when we did a meditation for, for contacting uh, extraterrestrials, we, uh, I, or, yeah, it was like a, a vision in my head that I had from a, a, it was a woman and she looked more like a, like a, a cat being, a, a feline woman. And she looked at me and it was like just a second or so. And um, she said, be patient. And that's all I got from this. And then I, I started to think and woke up from the from the meditation. All right. Well, that's good. That's a good first start. Coming so, through um, the extra dimensional consciousness is coming through an archetypal form, an ancient Egyptian form that connects to something that will work for you. The ancient Egyptian archetypal form looking feline is called Bastet or Bast, the ancient yeah. Egyptian goddess. So this is an archetypal form that the extra dimensional being was using that has relevance for the vibration of your own being and initiating a contact and telling you to not be impatient, basically, is a good first step. Things will unfold as they need to. Okay. You can do the meditation again anytime you wish. You can begin practicing strengthening that contact. Okay. Talk to um, you. Is there a specific, um, like, I guess it, it would be, uh, um, whatever works uh, for you or replicate yeah. what you did before. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So when, um, I, I hear, sometimes I hear stories about, uh, people getting abducted. Yes. And, um, 
what I was wondering is, uh, in when they talk about it, the the first uh, contact or initial contact is is a bit scary for them. Yes, because they don't understand what's going on because they haven't been told that these kinds of things are happening by an agreement you made before this life. This is part of the evolutionary path of humanity on the earth. And because most people aren't in touch with those agreements, then they will go into fear mode or survival mode because what is being experienced is very foreign to them. And to the physical consciousness almost seems life-threatening because it's so different, so alien to your normal physical reality on earth. There is nothing to be afraid of, but nevertheless, the physical mind may still react that way by going into survival mode because interacting with another dimension changes your frequency and to the physical mind that almost feels like a death, even though it is a type of death, it is not literally physical death, but the physical mind may interpret it as such and kind of go into a little bit of a panic. Okay. But you can get used to it and this is what we talked about earlier. Open up in the idea of love, express the idea as you have already done that you want it to be on your own terms in a comfortable way and that you are willing to participate and be more aware of what's going on if more awareness is allowed on their part. So approach it that way and things can smooth out. Does that help? Yes. Thank you. You Then I will wish you pleasant dreams. Thank you. Good day. Hi, Bashar. I have this idea. It's pretty raw, but I would love to hear your position regarding this. Um, So I heard recently scientists talking about anti-energy as in something that keeps existence expanding, as in something that could keep the wormhole open. And it resonated with me because i feel the same way when i clear a limiting belief back to zero when i clear it back as in reverse to a place where it never existed i feel that there is a huge expansion going on inside of me and i felt that we can do something we can return something to zero thus creating this anti-energy inside of us and thus creating a real expansion is it possible to absolutely reverse the limiting belief to bring it to zero as if it never existed and does that create a real expansion I would love to hear your opinion. Thank you. Yes. And what you're referring to scientifically is what scientists call dark energy rather than anti-energy, although it has what you might call an anti-property since it works in an opposite function from what you consider to be regular energy. But you see, you're doing this all the time. You're zeroing out every moment. This is what happens when you shift billions of times per second from one reality to another to create the illusion of space and time. You're actually zeroing out every moment and allowing the thing that existed in another reality to simply not exist or ever have existed in your reality. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist at all. It just means that it never existed in the new reality that you've created, but it still exists in other realities that are simply no longer being experienced by you. So you're zeroing out all the time, but however you wish to look at it, however you wish to frame it, however you wish to use that process is up to you to create the permission slip that works for your particular perspective and your particular expression of consciousness. So yes, the answer, the short answer is yes, it can be used that way. Greetings, Bashar. Good day. Hi. Um, I'm excited to talk to you about a few things. Yes. I often pondered your sharing about Earth people assisting those on other planets and their awakening process. Yes. During my life, um, I've had experiences in the dream state on starships, so it is a topic that's very exciting to me. Yes. And I would like for you, if you are willing, to speak further about how that will unfold individually for people that are interested in experiencing that in the future. Yes. Well, you will function as a kind of a vanguard 
for bringing humanity into the greater awareness of the fact that you're interacting with many beings already on that level, that you are part of a galactic family on different extra dimensional levels. But all of this must, as we just said with the last person, begin to be realized in a way that allows it to trickle down into physical reality as an experience as well. But many people are establishing footholds and connections and links to other beings in other realities on other planets and so on and so forth to establish a network and a connection and a relationship between the humanity of Earth and the beings of other worlds as well. So if you are part and parcel of that kind of an adventure, we thank you for your service in that way, and it will help accelerate the ability of people to choose to awaken to the probability that they can become physically part of a larger galactic family that they've already become part of on an astral level. Thank you. That's so exciting. And yes. your answer also ties into my next question. What does a human being have to do to transcend death and achieve immortality in the physical body? have a reason for doing so because in general there's not a reason for doing so because you have themes that you're exploring and when you get to the end of that theme you can change to another theme while still physical but most people actually enjoy the break in between of going into spirit to have more opportunities more probabilities to choose from and they may decide that they would actually rather do something else other than remain physical so the idea of being physically immortal, while it's not impossible, is relatively unlikely just because of the various things that there are to choose from that might actually be more exciting. Now, many people on your planet can be much more long physically lived. That's fine. It's just that most people will actually not choose physical immortality unless there is a really good reason to do so. But generally speaking, people will find that the reasons they might choose to be immortal are actually better served by actually going back into spirit. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I would enjoy having you tell us something new, lofty, exciting in our probable near future that we can focus on to assist in bringing it to full manifestation. There will be an increase in sightings of what you call UFOs in the years to come, in the next decade at the most, leading up to the idea of solidifying the open window of contact. So look for more sightings, listen for reports of more sightings, and listen for the ones in particular. One moment. Listen for the ones in particular. that seem to appear in areas that are connected to the concept of conflict and see what that does to the people in the area witnessing those craft. That is all we are allowed to say. Much appreciated. Our appreciation to you as well. Thank you. Good day. Good day. Hello, Bashar. Thank you for taking my question. So I have a twin sister and I am curious about what is, uh, other than as sort of having the same DNA, what is unique about that that may be different from other siblings that perhaps we can tap into or better connect with or if there's any other significance to just, you know, we have the same DNA. All right, I love you, Bashar. Thank you so much. Bye. There is always a slight difference in the DNA, which is what makes you a different person than your twin and vice versa. But that difference doesn't appear to be significant in the way that you gauge these things at this point in your science. Twins have exhibited, as many of you know, certain kinds of telepathic or psychic bonds because the similarity in your physical structure 
creates an ease to some degree, not that every twin takes advantage of this, but creates an ease to some degree of creating a similar vibration. Remember, telepathy or telepathy is the result of being on the same wavelength as someone else and having the same thoughts at the same time. You're not actually reading their mind, you're reading your own mind because you're on a similar wavelength and thus on that frequency, you can only have certain thoughts that are germane to that frequency. So being a twin can enhance the idea of telepathy between you because you're already physiologically so similar that the vibrational difference between you isn't so great that you can't easily get into sync with one another and have the same thoughts at the same time. That's one advantage of twinness. At the same time, there is a polar opposite to this idea. It allows you as seemingly, and I say this loosely, seemingly the same person or a similar person to have different experiences and different vantage points that you can share with one another. So it would be like saying, well, what if I did this instead of that? So twins can actually allow you to follow two different paths and two different themes, but as an extension of the same oversoul as if, well, what if I live that life instead of this life? And what if I live that life instead of this life? And then compare notes as if you had lived two lives simultaneously from the oversoul's perspective. Good day, good day. Great day, Dean Bashar. How are you? Perfect, and you? You're welcome. Um, so to begin, I wanted to, um, I've been studying the Abraham teachings. Yes. And a lot of times they'll ask their questioners, do you believe that you're vibration and energy? And I can't ever say yes to that. So I was hoping that you might aid me in getting to know how I can get my mind to know that everything is made of vibration and energy, including me, like my mind knows how to pick up a pencil. Well, have you studied even your own physical, scientific quantum mechanics? I've tried, but it just goes over my head. Well, take your time. But the idea in general is that everything is about resonance. Everything is about frequency. That's how you differentiate. Let's start at the beginning. Do you understand the concept that there is simply one unbroken, homogenous existence? Uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Let me put it even more simply. Do you believe in cake? Yes. You're familiar with cake? Cake, yes, that you eat? Yes, cake. Yes, yes. Now, if somebody gave you a slice of cake and asked you, can you analyze, however you wish to, under a microscope or whatever, what the ingredients are that went into creating that slice of cake. Are you with me so far? Yes, yes. Does that seem like a thing that is relatively simple to do? To analyze it all? No, not go under a microscope, probably yes. All right, thank you. And let's say you do that and you find, well, there is milk in here and there are eggs in here and there is flour in here and there is chocolate in here and there is sugar in here and you find all these things and break it all down to those particular individual ingredients. Yes? Yes. You're with me so far? Yes. All right. Each of those things are made of atoms, yes? Yes. You understand that, yes? Yes. Well, what makes sugar different from chocolate? I don't know. Sure you do. It's made of a different arrangement of atoms, is it not? Okay. I'll go with that. Can you okay. follow that? Yes? Yes. yes. All yes. right. So a different arrangement of atoms is similar to the idea of a different frequency. It gives off a different vibration because it's a different arrangement of things. Just like red is electromagnetic energy, the same electromagnetic energy as blue but it's operating on a different frequency that your senses perceive as what you call a different color. Are you with me? Yes. All right. So it's really no more complicated than that. One material from another is a different arrangement of certain things that you call atoms. One color from another is simply a different frequency in much the same way that when you watch your television, you're watching one program and then you switch to a different program, 
well, why don't those two programs interfere with one another? How can you see one clearly and then another that's different clearly without interference from the one you were watching a moment ago? It's all about a different frequency. It's like teeth interleaving between one another instead of trying to get into the same space at the same time. So that's all that's meant by different frequencies, different resonances, is just about whatever the material is, and you don't have to know what it is, that existence is made of, has different patterns of frequency and vibration, different ideas within it that create different experiences. And that's what creates everything, is those imposition of different patterns, different frequencies, different vibrations that allows you to perceive something as being different from something else, even though it's all made of the same thing. Is this helping? Yes. Thank you. That's all there is to it. Okay. I appreciate that. Makes sense? Yes. Oh, the I, last I, thing I wanted to talk about was the ego. Um, yes. How can I done the practices that you've talked about, like with writing a contract in order to get the ego to stop wanting to be so dominant and everything. Yes. And as I've been practicing the law of attraction with the Abrahams, it still seems to keep wanting to know the how of everything. So that dominant thought kind of overrides the other dominant thoughts. All right. that. How can All I right. go about that's because you have a definition of that that makes you think that it will actually help you when in fact it will actually hurt you. So the idea is that when the ego thinks it needs to know all how the mechanisms work and how this and what's going to happen and all the details, it's actually, shall we say, making itself more opaque to what's going on. It's actually slowing the process down by doing that. It's actually assuming it knows what the best outcome actually is when it doesn't. If you actually start relaxing that and give a different definition to that idea as something that would actually work against you and not allow you to move forward as quickly as you might like and not give you the actual best outcome, then once you associate that idea, that definition to the process, you will stop doing it because you will realize that the ego simply has no capacity to know what the best outcome is or that it really needs to know how things work and that all these things are working towards slowing the process down and making things actually more murky for you. Okay, so having a stubborn mind or a stubborn ego, is that a common thing that people have? The people stubbornness, have? again, stubbornness comes from a definition that is out of alignment with who you truly are. So in other words, you're defining the stubbornness as it's got to happen this way or something will go wrong. You have to realize that that's just a story that your negative beliefs are telling you. You have to stop believing in that story. So it's more about my beliefs, not my ego actually doing it. It's always about your beliefs because your beliefs color what your ego is capable of expressing itself to do. Okay. So go into the beliefs and say, stubbornness is just an insistence that if I let go of doing it this way, something worse will happen. That's a belief that the negative belief is trying to get you to buy into so you won't let it go. This is how beliefs perpetuate themselves. The negative ones will use fear to perpetuate themselves. It's not malicious. It's just how they're structured. Because if beliefs, both positive and negative and neutral, don't have a way of perpetuating themselves, then you can't have a physical reality experience because physical reality isn't real. It's only the product of what you believe to be true. It's only the product of your focus. So the idea of buying into a negative belief, if you happen to have bought into it to begin with, is that the negative belief is going to continue to try and perpetuate itself by feeding you more negative fear-based beliefs so you won't let it go. You have to understand that what it's telling you is not a fact, it's just a story to perpetuate itself and that you can change the story and everything will be fine. Gotcha. Does that help? Right. It does. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I hope you have a great day. And so well. Thank you so much for your time. Always. All right. Thank you. Bye. Hello, Bashar. Um, the other day I was reading some channeled material from the Arcturian Council where they were describing that we are here to experience the ultimate experience of knowing ourselves from finite beings to infinite beings. And, you know, that's cool but it just seems like I have 
I feel like I have this perspective that, you know, we're just kind of like bored as high dimensional entities and we kind of just want to, you know, play a game to, you know, experience ourselves as separate. And, you know, to me, that just seems like we're just like guinea pigs. I don't know. So I'm kind of just, you know, at a loss with trying to figure out why we're even doing this. Please and thank you. You are your own guinea pig. You're not anyone else's guinea pig. And you're not bored as higher entities. You simply see the excitement and the value and advantage of doing things in different ways according to what's possible in existence. So don't necessarily have to bring boredom into it. You don't have to bring the idea of victimhood into it by referring to yourself as a guinea pig. If you are a guinea pig, you're your own guinea pig. So sometimes you might decide it's going to be very exciting to go into a particular reality so you can pig out in a different way. Hi there. Uh, thank Hello. you, Vishar, for taking my call. I it is our questions. pleasure and our passion to do so. What would you like to discuss? I'm curious about, uh, since consciousness takes place at the subconscious, subconscious, and unconscious level, is this unique to the human experience, or do others as well, other species, have those three forms of consciousness? There are a few that do, but of course they can still experience them in a very different way. So it's not absolutely unique to humanity. What is relatively unique, although again, not absolutely so, with Earth humans, is the degree to which they allow the fear-based beliefs to color the functionality of the subconscious mind. I see. That being said, um, I do notice that when we go into the dream state, it seems like we open up to a higher aspect of consciousness. Yes. I'm presuming, since you've mentioned that your species woke up in the dream. Yes. So my question is, as we... As we try to expand our consciousness, how can we maintain what some experiences, out-of-body experiences while we sleep, so that we could become more cognizant and retain a memory of our sleep? Where it is relevant to do so, you can do so. It might not always be relevant to do so, because you might be doing many things out of body that aren't necessarily relevant to what you're doing when you're physical. So don't necessarily insist that you have to remember everything. But if you open up to the idea of allowing yourself to be more lucid and let the physical and the non-physical become more common in the sense of being more alike than not alike, relax the definitions that there is such a great difference between physical and non-physical because physical reality is just a different type of dream. So the more lucid you become in physical reality, the more lucid and aware you will become of non-physical reality because you're not imposing such a separation or barrier between the two because they are just different aspects of one thing. Because remember, you never really leave spirit. You're just dreaming that you've left spirit. So the more you allow yourself to relax the definitions of difference between physical and non-physical reality, the more you will remember whatever is relevant for you to remember when you are quote unquote out of body. Does that help? Yes, it does. And to that end, um, I find it kind of synchronistic that we're dealing with a species that doesn't use memory in the same way that we do. Yes. And yet we're going through an experience of coming into incarnation with no memory. Um, well, some of you, not all of you, many of you do have memory. Is it, is it also part of the expansion to be able to recall, to bring forth the memories? In general, yes. But again, it depends on what's relevant for the theme that you chose to explore. It's not necessarily relevant for everyone to do it that way. But it is becoming more generally possible and probable with the children being born on your planet over the last few decades, yes. So along those lines, I could... I could develop it if I, if I chose that thing, because I feel, I feel like I'm exploring consciousness as a theme. And um, to that end, I seem to have woken up to some of the clear audience experiences. And it's like when I leave the dream state, I wake up during conversations ensue or take place that apparently I'm doing while I'm dreaming. Yes, all right. So again, so, that may be part of the process of creating 
more similarity between physical and non-physical reality for you by crossing that divide, by allowing conversations and awareness to cross that divide and start leaking into your physical reality from the non-physical one. I was also uh, curious if, if I had an experience in 2008 where I actually have a recollection of being on board a ship, but I don't know who those beings are. Would it be possible? Would you be able to determine that? Well, most likely you're dealing again with greys and hybrids because that's the typical people you will be dealing with with regard to those memories of being aboard ships. It doesn't mean that there aren't other beings there from time to time as well, like the mantis and so on and so forth. But in general, it will mostly be the greys and the hybrids. Sometimes you'll get the things like tall whites and other kinds of beings that have references and familiarity to some people on your planet. But again, generally, hybrids and greys. And so when those exchanges occur, we're, are we in some form of astral where, you know, we meet halfway from where they're at? They're at? Usually, not always, but usually. Sometimes there is actually an altered physical reality in which you still are kind of physical, but not exactly in the same physical reality that you consider to be your physical reality when you are, quote unquote, awake. I see. It can just be a shift into a parallel reality that is very similar to yours, but also contains qualities of the astral realm. I see. All right. And so um, I, I also uh, do recollect having an experience being out of body when I was in the hospital in, in a certain case. At that time, I had a being actually... I think assist me in coming out of body because I was dealing with a lot of pain. Yes, that's not uncommon. It's not uncommon to have your guides or other beings help in those situations. Yes. I, I found it fascinating because when I got out of the body, the being was actually looking at me above the hospital bed. And so I could see myself and I could see the being, but he wasn't looking at me in the bed. He was looking at me directly where I was out of body. Yes, because you were more in that being's reality at that point. The body, in that sense, was in another reality that is not necessarily relevant as relevant to that being. And so, once again, I guess, unless it's part of my thing, those memories of what took place when that took place seem to elude me. <laughs> it's all right. Again, you remember enough at the moment. Take the energy, take the experiences, and move forward in your exploration. Don't necessarily think that you always need to look back. Great. Wonderful. All right. Sounds great. I appreciate the time and I wish you unconditional love and gratitude for your service. Unconditional love to you as well for yours. Thank you. Good day. Good day. And pleasant dreams.